Victor Wembenyama didn't have to wait long to stand out. The 223-centimeter French star from the Metropolitans had 92 block shots at the rim and on the perimeter. He also made some cool basketball moves like dribbling, loose ball diving, and playing point guard for one play. All of that happened in the first two minutes. In this video, we'll discuss how the NBA world is obsessed with Wembenyama and some other tall players. First off, how good of a player is he? What a way to set the mood. The 200 scouts and NBA executives who came to see a show on Wednesday didn't have to pay for their tickets. Because even if they had, they wouldn't have been shortchanged. When Banyama showed off all of the skills that make people think he'll be the first player in the NBA draft in 2023. In his first NBA game with 12-minute quarters, he scored 37 points, made 11 of 20 shots, made 7 three-pointers, blocked 5 shots, and grabbed 4 rebounds. Sometimes he was amazing, said Vincent Collet, the coach of the Metropolitans 92. Even though it didn't matter, the final score was G League Ignite 122, Metropolitans 115. Scoot Henderson, the consensus number 2 pick right now, led the Ignite with 28 points and 9 assists. Up next, future expectations from the player. The teams will play again on Friday. After that, Wembenyama probably won't play another vital game in the US until the NBA Summer League in July 2023. It was a great experience, he said. Wembenyama said, I can't wait until the next time. I know we'll do it again in two days and for the rest of my life after that. A lot of Wembenyama's best skills were on display, and they were as good as they were said to be. He scored from beyond the arc, step back jumpers. After one of those shots went in, he did something that looked a little like Michael Jordan shrug from the 1992 NBA Finals. He played with what looked like a bit of a twisted ankle and made a fadeaway three simultaneously. He even argued foul calls like a seasoned NBA player, and on a few occasions, he may have had a good case. The 18-year-old can get better in many ways, but it's clear that he's ready for the NBA and ready for the attention he'll get as the draft approaches and if he's the first pick. Followed by, everyone was watching him play very closely. Even things that didn't appear in the box score next to Wembenyana's name were sometimes shocking. For example, he set a pick near the center of the court in the middle of the second quarter and rolled. Then he caught a pass a few inches inside the three-point line, dribbled once, and jumped because he was already in the middle of the lane. He tried to jump over several Ignite players, took a shot, got fouled, shrugged off the contract, and dunked the rebound. Even though it didn't count, some people sitting near the court were shocked. There are always shows in Vegas, but it wasn't Cirque du Soleil that got the basketball world's attention. R.C. Buford, who works for San Antonio, and Sam Presti, who works for Oklahoma City, talked before the game. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and Trevor Ariza watched the game from seats near the Metropolitan's bench. They were in town with the Phoenix Suns to play the Los Angeles Lakers. DeMarcus Cousins took a seat near the bar for the Ignite team. Moving on to, what did others have to say about him? Many influential people have been keeping up with this player's moves. Tremont Waters, a guard for the Mets 92 who has played for three NBA teams, said that everyone was watching the player closely. It wasn't even just the Victor show. Henderson, who's also 18 and very talented, thinks he should be the first pick and has had more than his fair share of great moments. He went around Wembenyana's excellent 243 centimeter wingspan a few times to make layups and got him in the air a few more times to set up assists for his Ignite teammates, and also made a step back three over him. Scoot's not bad, he said. He also tried a dunk with 331 left on the clock. Wembenyana hit it away with little trouble. With 131 left, Henderson tried a three, but Wembenyama sent that one into the stands. But Henderson held up his end of the deal in this made-for-TV showdown. He made 11 of 21 shots from the field, and three of the 10 shots he missed were blocked by Wembenyama. Now, let's look at some of the tallest NBA players right now. In sports like basketball, where you have to jump high, dribble, and so on, height is a significant factor. First, we've got Mohamed Fakaba Bamba. He's an American professional basketball player who plays for the Orlando Magic in the NBA. In college basketball, he played for the Texas Longhorns. Scouts were impressed by his wingspan, which was 7 feet 9 inches. Mo Bamba finally got a chance to show what he could do for the Orlando Magic this season. It took a lot longer than anyone thought. During his first three seasons in the NBA, Bamba didn't play much because of injuries, illnesses, coaches who didn't want to change, and his inability to adapt to the league. But the reset at the trade deadline last season gave the center a fresh start, and a chance to show why he was picked 6th overall in the 2018 NBA Draft. Not to mention Isaiah Hartenstein. At 7 feet tall, German-American Isaiah Hartenstein is a pro basketball player for the New York Knicks of the NBA. Hartenstein caught an impressive 57.3% of the 103 floaters he tried to capture. He knows exactly when to circle up, when to take his shot, and when to 
run for the basket. Hartenstein is a strong offensive player. Even though he doesn't have a reliable jump shot, he has a lot of passing and inside scoring skills. The New York Knicks want to get back into the playoffs. If they play bonus basketball this season, center Isaiah Hartenstein will probably have to play a significant role off the bench. Hartenstein was the first player the Knicks signed as a free agent this summer. He may not have been the best player they signed, but he was the first player they signed. Last season, he played well for the Clippers, which helped him get a two-year, $16 million deal with the Knicks. But Hartenstein wants to show that he's still worth the money. Let's learn more about Goga Bitatze. Here's another player at seven feet. Goga Bitatze is an NBA player born in Georgia and plays for the Indiana Pacers. He averaged a career-high seven points and 3.5 rebounds in 50 games, shot 28% from long range and 52% anywhere else on the court. He said he wanted to be picked in the 2019 NBA draft in April. He could have won the lottery. Bitatze got a busy summer planned on the court. He's about to start the last year of his rookie contract. He'll take some time off at first to let his foot heal properly, but he'll spend most of the offseason back in Georgia, where he'll play for his national team in two major campaigns. Coming up, Frankie Kaminsky. Francis Stanley Kaminsky is an American basketball player who works for the Atlanta Hawks of the NBA. Frank is good at scoring goals from inside the box. His lack of explosiveness is made up for because he can move around and put himself in good spots. Last season, Frank's rim shot was about 98% as good as the league average. Because he was so good looking, he could also shoot at the rim, with an adjusted field goal percentage of 61.8%. Next, Dwayne Dedman. Dwayne Jamal Dedman was an NBA basketball player from the United States. He plays for the Miami Heat. He played basketball for Antelope Valley College and USC in college, which is how he got the name The Mechanic. During last year's regular season, the Heat were 16.2 points better when Dedman was on the court. This was a result that was in the top 99%. Adebayo thought Dedman was the best way to get more energy and fill in the gaps when he wasn't on the floor. Finally, Brooke Lopez. Robert Lopez is an American pro basketball player who plays for the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA. During his two years of college basketball, he played for the Stanford Cardinal. The New Jersey Nets chose Lopez with the 10th pick in the 2008 NBA draft. People could be forgiven for underestimating Robin Lopez's game first. Significantly since the center position in the NBA has changed so much in recent years. At this point in his career, he's neither the fastest nor the most athletic. He doesn't stretch the floor like his brother Brooke, and you wouldn't call him a prominent center for any switching scheme. But Lopez is still an important player who can have an impact on both ends of the court, thanks to his excellent feel for the game, high-intensity approach, and natural gifts. And on that note, that's a wrap for this video. What do you think about this new and highly skilled French player? Is his height advantageous, or is it mainly about his skills? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.